William and the Werewolf, or William of Palern, as it is known to scholars, is one of those medieval romances which is referred to as featuring a character known as the Fair Unknown, typically a boy wandering in the forest, possibly of poor parentage, who learns to become a knight and then his nobility is uncovered and he blossoms into a knight and often into nobility. In the case of William in this romance, we already know that he is nobility because at the beginning he is introduced to us as the son of the king and queen of Palermo, Palern, but he has a wicked uncle who wants him got rid of so that he can inherit the kingdom. And at the moment that William is about to be uh, got rid of in the romance, a benign werewolf turns up and steals him away to the woods. The werewolf looks after him and wants him discovered ultimately by someone who can look after him properly. And it's when the werewolf is away gathering food for William that a cowherd in the woods comes across him, or more exactly, his dog comes across him and then the cowherd is drawn to the noise and finds William in the cave. One of the wonderful features of the romance is the way it treats people of a lower class. Unusually it features them in quite uh, intense detail. The cowherd we learn a lot about but we also come across charcoal burners, servants, quarrymen, it's quite an interesting romance in its understanding of people other than nobility and one of its themes throughout is one of noble families looking after the poor and looking after those in their charge. So it's got a reforming message which is extremely endearing and quite interesting for its time, 1350, translated into English from an earlier French romance possibly translated with a social message because this of course is the time of the, uh, the Black Death and subsequent plagues. Watch out in this reading for some wonderful touches. The parts I like in particular are where the cowherd is shown to be clouting his shoes as is his custom. But a feature I really like about this romance is the fact that you hear the voice of the narrator I've read in the books as I've heard tell. Uh, so his voice really comes across. He's a real person. He's not in the distance like many other romances. He's there with you as the story unfolds. Anyway, do enjoy this reading. Now, it befell in that forest that fast nearby there lived a worthy old fellow who was a cowherd that for a fair many winters in that forest had kept many cows in that country in herds of the common. Thus at that time it betides, as our books reveal, that cowherd comes to be keeping his beasts fast by the earth barrow that this boy slept within. The herdsman had a hound with him, light like a heart, used to bring back his beasts when they broke away. The herdsman sat with his hound below the hot sun, not fully a furlong from that fair child, clouting his shoes as is custom, cleaning them as befalls. All that while the werewolf went about hunting, to bestow on the boy what food it might bring. The child dwelled in his den, hidden singly in secret, a big and bold boy, very brave for his age. but. Without sparing speech, he needed swift respite. Though lovely that lair was, he was lonely in there, and beheld the bushes outside, blowing green all about, which looked sweet and lovely, and lent great shade, and where birds with bold beauty sing on their boughs with the melody they made in the May season. That little child became listless, and crawled out of his cave so for to fetch flowers which he sees before him, and gather the grasses which were green and fair. And when he went out, he liked it so well, the scents of that sweet season and the songs of the birds, that he fared fast about to gather those flowers, and played for a long while to relish that mirth. Now, the hound of that herdsman, as so it would happen, 
fast sniffed out that child and follows its scent, and soon he sees it to speak the whole truth. He began to bark at that boy and stand at bay from him, such that he was nearly witless for worry and fear, and comes then to cry so keenly and shrill, and wept so wonderfully fast, I would truly tell you, that quickly his crying was heard by the cowherd, who knew straight away it was the voice of a child. So up he rose rapidly, and ran there swiftly, and was drawn towards that den by the noise of his dog. By now that boy, on account of that barking, was driven back to his den, and hid in its darkness, and wept as he would, vexed wild through fear, while the hound at the hole held itself in abeyance. And when the cowherd came there, he cowered low down, to behold in that hole why his hound was barking. Then swiftly he saw that seemly child, lain lovely yet weeping in that low filthy cave, clad in comely clothing, the kind fit for a prince, in good cloths of gold, dressed richly and gay, with prized stones, fine pelts, as would be right and proper. The churl chastised his dog, shocked by this chance find, bade him cease his barking, and spoke to the boy, encouraged him to come to him, and call to him often, and offered him some flowers with fair behest, and bade him to have hastily what his heart might want, like apples and all things that children adore. Soon, I speak truly, that churl enticed him so well, the child comes from the cave, and stopped all his crying. The churl, with great cheer, took that child in his arms, and kissed it, and caressed it, and thanks Christ often, who had sent this godsend, as such prey to be found. He quickly went with that child to his house, and took him to his wife, at haste to take care of. A gladder woman under God never glowed on this earth than that wife with this child I would have you know truly. She called to it kindly, and asked of his name, and it answered swiftly, saying, I am called William. I do hope you enjoyed that reading from William and the Werewolf, William of Palerne. I'm translating it at the moment, and crowdfunding for its publication. Uh, in the same way that I did for my two other books, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight and King Arthur's Death. If you'd like to support the book, please do so. Your name will be published in the back as a patron. But uh, in any case, just enjoy the wonderful stories of these medieval romances. I'll be updating you with more films and readings in due course. Thanks very much for listening.